Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 20. Now to him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above that, <laughs> hallelujah, exceeding abundantly above all that you could ask or even dream, come on somebody, according to the power that's working in you, exceeding abundantly above what you've been asking. Exceeding abundantly above what you've been thinking. Come on. Above what you've been dreaming. I don't know about you, but it's time to dream big in 2019. Come on, somebody. I believe 2019 is a time to go higher. It's time to believe God for great things. Now, I don't know what you're believing for, but it's time to start pressing into it. This is your year. Come on. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. You got to have something that just fires you up and, and literally uh, gives you a vision, gives you something to run towards. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When I was four years old, the Lord came into my, you know, my room and called me into the ministry. And, uh, you know, that doesn't go over too well with a Jewish daddy. But uh, how many know that uh, they fought me on that growing up? And uh, I, I, I knew I was called to preach the word of God. And yet I'd never been to a church. I'd never been to a Christian church. But I knew Jesus had talked to me. And he had called me. And there was a vision out there. But how many know visions can get deflected? You can begin to go do something else. I didn't run from God, but I ran from the calling. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I got a different vision. You know, sometimes God will give you something so wonderful, but you will begin to do something else because uh, it sounds easier or sounds better or whatever it might be. Well, I, 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 my vision began to be Hollywood. I was going to be the next Gary Grant. Come on. <laughs> oh, gee, yes. I even got his... his uh, Sneeze, hallelujah, glory, <laughs> glory be to God. No. <laughs> but I, I tell you what, that, I mean, that was my life for so many years, you know, in Hollywood and doing movies and commercials and did some modeling and, and yeah, yeah, me, glory to God. And uh, did, did, you know, stand up and, and that was my life. But I tell you what, dreams begin to get back on course. Amen. And let me tell you something, we're going to build a church. Come on, somebody. Amen. I got a dream in my heart for Great Faith Church. I got a dream in my heart that we are going to build a church that is going to build strong Christians with great faith. All right, now. now, I know there's some people who say, well, how could you call your church Great Faith? Who do you think you are? I'm a child of the living God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I don't want anything less than God's best. I I don't want I don't want to just play church. We are the church. We're rising up in this hour. We're going to believe the word no matter what it takes. We're going to take hold of it and we're going to run with it. Amen. Come on somebody. <laughs> Hallelujah. I'm not preaching today. Glory to God. We are going to go to the next level this year. Turn with me to Psalms, the book of Psalms, uh, verse 78, or chapter 78. Psalm 78. And let's go down here to uh, the 40th verse. Hallelujah. Psalms 78, verse 40. How often did they provoke him, talking about God, in the wilderness and grieve him in the desert? Yea, they turned back and tempted God and limited, everybody say limited, limited. The Holy One of Israel. How many know you can limit God in your life? God wants to do big things. But we can limit God. And I tell you what, we've got to get to a point where we take the limits off God. Come on, somebody. Well, I, I could do this vision or I could do, I mean, I could fulfill this dream or, or you know, I could get into this, but uh, I'm lacking here and I, I'm lacking this or I'm lacking that. Let me tell you something. 
If it's a God dream, you're lacking nothing. Come on. How many know God will bring people in to help you? Amen. Come on, somebody. <laughs> Amen. God will bring somebody alongside and, and they'll have just the information you need. Or they'll, they'll pick it up and run with it with you and, and, and do the heavy work. Come on. All right. But there's going to be those that will come alongside. Where you're weak, He is strong. Come on. He's going he's gonna to do it. He's going he's gonna to make you go over and higher and, and press in. And there are some things that are so big, but let me tell you something, you cannot limit, limit the Holy One of Israel. You cannot limit God. If you're limiting God, you are telling Him that He cannot help you or He, what He said you could do, you can't do. But I'm here today to tell you, you can do what God says you could do. Come on. All right, all right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Man, I tell you what, God's a big God and He's trying to cause us to do great things. Yes, he's got something great with your name on it this morning. He tried to, he's trying to bring you higher. Well, I'm just kind of happy with where I'm at. Well, if you're happy with where you're at, maybe you're only thinking about yourself. Maybe you're not kingdom minded. How many know that we've got to get kingdom minded? Amen. You know, it's not all about you. <laughs> Amen. There's a dying world out there that needs Jesus. Amen. There's a world out there that needs faith. Amen. There's a world out there that needs what we've got. Come on, somebody. And some of that's going to take some money. All right, now. Amen. I mean, you know, money's just a tool. Don't get excited. Uh, money is just a tool that we use so we can get things done. And sometimes God will give you ideas, witty inventions, a business concept. He'll begin to do some things in your life that literally will cause you to get kingdom minded. Come on, somebody. Glory to God. Mm. Don't limit. Don't limit God. He's a big God. He's got exceeding abundantly above what you're asking. He's got exceeding abundantly above what you're dreaming. Hallelujah. You know, uh, it, it says here that they were in the wilderness and, and they're seeing manna coming down from heaven. I mean, you know, it might have been kind of like crackers or whatever it was. but <laughs> I, mean, it, I mean, it's food. And, and, and matter of fact, the word manna means what's this? I mean, they, you know, they didn't know what it was. And, and, uh, but they ate it, glory to God. And it, and it must have tasted pretty good. It, it, and I believe it was nacho cheese. But <laughs> it, 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 nacho cheese crackers. I, you know, it, it, hey, God knew the end from the beginning. I'm sure he could have. <laughs> but, but I'm telling you what, God was giving them that. He had a fire by night. Yes. A fire by night. They're not cold. Right. They're sleeping comfortable. Amen. They had a fire by night. They had clouds by day to keep the heat off of them in the desert. Oh, yes, Lord. I mean, God is taking care of them and being their Jehovah Jireh, yes. their provider. Amen. Every step of the way, and yet they were still limiting the very one, the very God of Israel. I don't think we should limit God when He's already shown us so many things in our life where He was there. Amen. So many times He's been right there where you say, well, you know, uh, I, I don't know if I can do this. Well, think about all the times He did. That's right. Amen. Think about all the times He was there. And, well, God's never been there. You lie. <laughs> God has been there every single day. Amen. He'll never leave you or forsake you. Hallelujah. Matter of fact, the reason you're still alive is the grace of God. Hallelujah. Whatever you're dreaming, it's time to dream bigger. Hallelujah. You see, the whole time they were in the wilderness, everything that God gave them, the manna, the fire by night, the cloud during the day, uh, the provision, uh, their, their shoes didn't even wear out. All of that was, was secondary it was simply his provision during that time. But he was, that wasn't what he was trying to do. He's trying to get them into the promised land. Amen. And he's trying to do the same thing for you. 
He's trying to get you into a land that's filled with promise. He's trying to bring you into a land that flows with milk and honey. He's trying to get you into a land that is an abundant land. He's trying to restore to you Eden. He's trying to get you to a point where you're not sitting back and, and don't know if you're ever going to survive or you're going to make it. He's trying to get you to thrive. Come on, somebody. He created you to thrive. He created you to be more than a conqueror, an overcomer in this world. He's trying to get you to rise up and be the head and not the tail, above and not beneath, Bless going in and bless going out. But we can't, we can't sit back and limit the very one of Israel that's trying to do this. You say, well, I'd never do this. The whole children of Israel, I mean, except maybe Joshua and Caleb. Mm -hmm. That's right. Amen. Caleb. Anyway, <laughs> I tell you, every time I say that, I think of my, my grandson. And, and uh, 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 now, is it Caleb? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I, I've gotten thrown off by his name. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Uh, <laughs> turn with me over here to Proverbs chapter, chapter 4. Hallelujah. You, you need to begin to see a land of promise. And you've got to begin to, uh, you know, get hold of the promises. In the, this, is got, this has got the promises in it. This, this Bible has the promises in it. Amen. You know, uh, right now, the garden is your heart. You plant the promises in your heart and they come up. Yes, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You, you plant those promises. I like uh, what Christie always says. Keep the dream alive. Hallelujah. Keep the dream alive in your heart. Glory be to God. Well, that's what you got to do. You got to keep these promises in there. Uh, you, you know, you take hold of a promise. It's all my need. Well, what is that? What is all? Everybody say all. All. <laughs> all my need shall be supplied by His riches and glory. Amen. Well, that promise right there covers just about all. Hallelujah. I mean, yeah, there are so many promises you can latch on to and begin to plant them in your heart and work those and, and speak them out of your mouth. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Come on, somebody. Amen. Do you know why you speak in tongues? <clears throat> the reason that we speak in tongues is because when we're baptized in the Holy Spirit, now, back in, in the Old Testament, they weren't baptized in the Holy Spirit. The Spirit would come upon them, even the great prophets. But, but in the New Testament, the Holy Spirit comes in us. Come on, somebody. Uh, right now. Well, the Holy Spirit mixes with our spirit in the heart of man, in the heart of <laughs> us. Well, if the Holy Spirit is now in you, in your heart, out of the abundance of your heart, come on somebody. You see, out of the abundance of your heart, if you're filled with the Spirit, that's why you speak in tongues, because it's going to come out your mouth. Come on somebody. That was just a side one. That's just free. Just take it. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Sidebar. Proverbs chapter 4. Now, Proverbs chapter 4, go down to verse 20. My son, attend to my words. That right there you can preach a series on. My son, attend, attend to my words. Incline your ear to my sayings. Let them not depart from your eyes. Keep them in the midst of your Heart, Come on, somebody. Right. Hallelujah. What you focus on, you're moving towards. Right. You better tell somebody. If you're focusing on the wrong thing, you're moving towards it. Amen. <laughs> There's some things that you've been focusing on, you need to break that focus. Because <laughs> you don't want what you're moving towards. But there are things in the Word of God that you begin to focus on. It will literally cause you to move towards it. Amen. Everything you focus on. Come on, somebody. Uh, what you hear. Look at that. My son, attend to my words. Incline your ear. Everybody say ear. ear. Number one, those things that you hear 
are what is going to get in you. Faith comes by hearing. And by hearing the rhema, the word of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Then it goes on to say, let them not depart from your eyes. Number two, eyes. You've got you've to meditate on that word and, and look at the word. And, and if you meditate on that word both day and night, Joshua says you'll prosper and have good success. Hallelujah. I don't know about you, but I want to prosper and have good success. Well, how do I do that? I keep my eyes on the Word. you got to, number one, hear the Word. Number two, you've got you've to mm, keep your eyes on that Word. Meditate on it. And number three, you've got to get it in your heart. If it doesn't get in your heart, you didn't plant it. If you don't get the dream in your heart, you didn't plant it. If you get the dream in your heart, you'll move towards it. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And if you get it in your heart, you have you've literally planted some seed that's going to grow. Amen. Words are seeds, and seeds grow. Come on, somebody. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So you got to get it in your heart. Turn with me to Genesis chapter 15. Let's look at Abraham. Genesis chapter 15. And let's go down here to verse 5. Hallelujah. Genesis is the first book of the Bible. If you're looking. <laughs> Genesis chapter 15, verse 5. And he brought him forth abroad and said, God said, Look now toward heaven and tell... Now that word tell there in the Hebrew means to count, but it also means to speak. Mm. Hallelujah. Do you know if you start counting things, how big God is, how the grandeur of God, the, the things that He is showing you is going to come out your mouth. Amen. So literally here, the word count means tell. So it says, And behold, the word of the Lord came to him, saying, Oh, that, that's, that's good, but let's go down to verse 5. And he brought him forth abroad and said, Look now toward heaven, and count the stars, if you are able to number them. And he said to him, So shall your seed be. And he believed in the Lord. He believed the Lord. Everybody say, believe. believe. How many know that's the first step of faith? Amen. He believed the Lord, and it was accounted to him for righteousness. Come on, somebody. Amen. Glory be to God. He said, <laughs> Abraham, you're just trying to get one kid here. <laughs> and, and, and you're past the years of childbearing. And uh, you're focused on, you've got you to believe me somehow for one kid. But I'm trying to show you, there are going to be so many descendants from you that it, 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 it's like the stars of the heavens. Amen. You see, you're thinking too small. God is bigger than what your dream is. God is bigger than where you're at. God is able to help you get so much higher, so much greater, to get to the next level. Come on. Amen. Hallelujah. And he says one of the ways the, to do that is the sky is the limit. And really, it's not even the limit. He's just trying to get you past what you're thinking. Have you ever been out there on maybe a nice summer evening and you get outside of town where it's darker out, and you see the sky, and you're seeing constellations. I mean, you're seeing every star. I mean, it's just like the whole sky's lit up, and, and you're seeing more stars than you've seen in a long time. <laughs> and you're saying, well, that's the Milky Way, and that's the big dipper. There's a the little dipper, you know, and you're, you're counting them out. Well, here's Abraham, and he's looking up at all of the stars. And God is saying, that's where you are about to go. I want you to see it. I want you to see it so you can get it in here. Amen. See, God will use tangible things to get you into faith. God will use things in your life to show you something bigger. 
And he shows Abraham the stars of the heavens. I want to show you the stars of the heaven this morning. I want to show you something bigger. I, I mean, what you're thinking right now is big. Some of you got some big things. Come on. Amen. But God's even got something bigger than that. Come on. Amen. <laughs> Woo, hallelujah. God's bigger than that. And he's trying to show you those things. He said, count it. You can't do it. It's bigger than what you can do. Hallelujah. Amen. Go down here, verse 7. Uh, I already moved. <laughs> uh, verse 7 says, And he said to him, I am the Lord that brought you out of Ur of the Chaldees to give you this land to inherit it. How many know God's got an inheritance for you? He said to Abraham, he said, I want you to look up and I want you to see how big your inheritance is. God's got something for you to inherit that's bigger than what you're thinking right now. And it's not dependent on who you are. It's dependent on who He is. Yes. Amen. And God is big enough, come on, Absolutely. to bring you to the next level. Oh, yeah. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Abraham believed God. Come on. Amen. And what did he get? An inheritance. Now turn with me over here to Hebrews chapter 11. Hebrews chapter 11. Now faith is, I like that, Hebrews chapter 11, everybody say faith is now, it says now faith is, the word is, is present tense, faith is always in the now. Faith is not believing someday it'll happen. Faith is believing it's already paid for. Faith is believing it's done. Abraham had some faith. Come on, somebody. Oh, yes. Abraham had to get there. He didn't, he, I mean, he didn't just get there overnight. I mean, he had to get to that point. Hallelujah. And, and you'll have joy and peace in your believing when you get there. Come on. Yes. Now, faith is the substance of things. Everybody say things. Thanks. I don't know what thing you're dreaming, but it's faith's for it. <laughs> Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen yet. I always add that word yet, because, man, I'll tell you what, it's coming. Come on, somebody. Amen. Go down here to verse, uh, verse 8. By faith, Abraham, when he was called to go out into a place uh, which he should, after receive for an inheritance, obeyed. How many know you got to obey? <laughs> what God tells you to do for the dream, you got to do it His way. Amen. Well, I'll do it my way and we'll see if it works. <coughs> I, let me just save you some time. It, it won't work. <laughs> but how many know if you start doing it God's way, it's about to work? God's ways work. Come on. Amen. And Abraham did it God's way. Come on. Come on. We've got to do it by faith. We've got to believe our God. It's impossible to please God without faith. We've got to go to the next level by our faith. Hallelujah. Amen. So it says by faith, uh, verse 9, by faith he sojourned in the land of promise as in a strange country dwelling in tabernacles, dwellings, uh, with Isaac and Jacob and the heirs with him of the same promise. I, I want to stop right here and say this. You know, when God made covenant with Abraham, the very next chapter, it said, <laughs> it says, Abraham was very wealthy with gold and silver and livestock. Mm. It didn't take long for God to do something. No. Right. The blessing of Abraham didn't come just so that he could have a child. Come on. Amen. Isaac was just, you know, part of it. How many know God has some exceeding abundantly above that? Yes, he and he said, I'm not, I'm not only going to give you a, all the descendants, come on, the, the children of Israel. I'm about to give you exceeding abundantly above that. I'm going to give you gold and silver. And when it says Abraham was very rich, everybody say very. very. The word very actually means exceedingly. 
you look at every patriarch, I wish, I wish some of these religious folks out there would start studying the patriarchs of the Bible. They were all rich. Why? They did it God's way. You do it God's way, you, you get, <laughs> you're going to be blessed. The blessing of Abraham came on Abraham. Hallelujah. Now, <laughs> By faith he sojourned in the land of promise as in a strange country dwelling in these tabernacles with Isaac and Jacob, the heirs with him of the same promise. <clears throat> for he looked for a city which has foundation whose builder and maker is God. Amen. I want you to look for a God thing. Amen. That's what Abraham was doing. He was looking for a building. He was looking for a land. He was looking for a city. He was looking for something that he didn't have anything to do with. But it was a God thing. Yes. There have been times like that in my life where uh, God had a house for us or a car or, or something. And, and, and it was just waiting on us. It was right there. Okay. And all I had to do was listen to him and press towards it. And as I listened to him and pressed towards it, it was there every time. Come on, somebody. Oh my God, my God. God's trying to press you towards something. He pressed Abraham, and Abraham believed him. And when he pressed towards that city, which maker and builder is God, there's a house. Come on, somebody. There's a house whose maker and builder was God. Come on. Amen, amen. There's a business building. Come yeah. on, son. Right? <laughs> whose maker and builder was God. Come on. There's some things that you've been waiting on that, that, that he said just press towards it because it's there. I built it and it's waiting on you. Yes. Now, when God builds it, he may use people. And that's how he gets things done down here. If he's going to do something big, he uses giants. Come on, somebody. <laughs> Hallelujah. I love it. When they went into the promised land, they said, Oh, no, there's giants in the land. And the spies went in there and they said, there, there's, We're like grasshoppers. And Joshua and Caleb come back and say, Man, you should see the size of grapes. They look like basketballs. <laughs> well, say something like that. Anyway. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory to God. Mm. You got to look to see what God can do. What God can do. Verse 11. Through faith also Sarah herself received strength to conceive. Strength to conceive seed. And was delivered of a child when she was past age. Beyond childbearing years. Because she judged God faithful. Who had promised. <clears throat> God. <laughs> you know there's scriptures for that. He's blessed your womb. And I mean there's just so many different scriptures. You got to get to a point. Where you just believe. Come on somebody. Yeah. That he's faithful. Amen. Sarah judged him faithful. It doesn't matter how old I am. God said it. It's going to happen somehow here. <laughs> and guess what? It did. Hallelujah. God's faithful. But you can't go in and out of faith. You, got, you just got to be, man, I don't care how long it takes. And you know when they got the promise, they did not have the baby right away. All right now. Come on with They had to work that faith to the point where it, it produced. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Verse 12. Therefore sprang there even one and him as, as good as dead, so many as the stars of the sky in multitude, and as the sand which is by the seashore innumerable. In other words, you've got to get to a point where your dream is so big, it's like the stars of the heavens, and if, and if you can't see the stars because you live in the city, go out and find some sand. Why? Because if you ever go to the seashore, you not only can't count the amount of, of granules of sand, but it, it, will, it will cause you to just go, your brain will overload trying to count it. Because you can't count it. It's innumerable. 
Guess what? God counted it. Do you know it says that God even counts the dust? Why? Because he's not in time. So he just like, okay, I'll do that today. Glory to God. Uh, you know, God knows, and you know what? He knows how much dust you have in your house. Come on, somebody. Anyway, let's go on. <laughs> Hallelujah. He's faithful. Yes, he is. And he's as big as the stars of the heaven. And he says, Abraham, I want you to see this. I, this is how it's going to work from now on. Amen. How many of you know it's always been by faith? Yeah. It goes back to Adam. Yes. Faith has always been the thing. Now, when the law came in, it was to show us we couldn't do it by ourselves. Mm. You can't have the dream by yourself. Faith's always been, and faith was always there even through the law. But faith now exists in its completeness. Now that we understand, we can't do it by ourselves. Amen. Hallelujah. You need God. Yes, yes I do. Hallelujah. And I, you know, that sounds so simplistic. You need God. But in today's world, it, it, we've got to say those things. Why? Because there are a lot of people that are just going and doing their own thing. Even people that go to church are doing their own thing. We need God. Hallelujah. Turn with me to Galatians chapter 3. God's about to help you get to the next level. God's about to give you a dream so big, so wondrous, so glorious, that only He could have thunk it. Come on. <laughs> Hallelujah. Genesis, I mean Galatians. <laughs> Galatians chapter 3. And let's go down here to verse 26. For you are all the children of God by faith. You're all the children of God by faith. Faith causes us to cry out, Abba, Father. Yeah. Abba means Daddy. Daddy. Uh, faith getting in your heart so big that we become the children of God. We are the children of God by faith. By faith. Come on. It, literally, everything that we have in, in, in our lives is by faith. Anybody that tells you faith's not important, faith is how everything works. Amen. Well, I went to this church over here, and, and they never even talk about faith, uh, unless they're talking against it. Hmm. How'd you get saved? Because you get saved by faith. Come on. Amen. Everything is by believing God. Faith. Now, uh, verse 27. For as many of you as have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ. We have put on Christ. When, when God the Father looks at us now, He sees us through the lens of Christ. Amen. He doesn't see your sin. The Father looks at you and sees Jesus. Come on, somebody. Right, yeah. Hallelujah. You could, be, you could be a frumpy old man. <laughs> and, and God sees Jesus. Come on. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory be to God. That's why when, when God looks at you and says, you can do it, because He sees Jesus. You put on Jesus. You are walking in Him. You're walking in His words, and His words are coming out your mouth. Hallelujah. So we're saved by faith and we're putting on Jesus. <clears throat> Verse 28. There is neither Jew nor, nor Greek. There is neither bond nor free. There is neither male nor female. For you are all one in Christ Jesus. In other words, uh, and I want to make this clear. There is male and female. Thank you, Lord. Now, <laughs> what it's saying is, there is nothing to stop you from where you're going. You have no excuse because even though we all are different and we all, you know, they're male and female and Jew and Greek and, he, you know, believer, whatever it might be. Well, we are now Christ. Come on, somebody. Amen. So don't think of yourself as somebody that can't do something. Think of yourself as if Christ is helping you. Yes. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory be to God. Amen. Now, verse 29. And if you be Christ's, <laughs> then you are Abraham's seed. Hallelujah. And heirs 
Are you Christ? What that saying is, if you be a Christian, then you are Abraham's seed and you have an inheritance and it was paid for by the blood of Christ. Come on somebody. So in other words the same blessing, the same covenant that came on Abraham is now on you. Deuteronomy 28. If you hearken, you listen to his voice you're going to be blessed in the city. Blessed in the field. Blessed in your body. Yes. <laughs> that means you're going to have children. Amen. Blessed in your possessions. Right blessed in the store. Yes. Come on, women. Oh, blessed yes. in the store. Yes. Blessed in the basket. Yes. That means you're not window shopping. You got a basket. Come on. Right. How, you got more than what you can carry. Come on. Oh, Enemy might come one way towards you, but he's going to flee seven ways. Your storehouses are now commanded by God to overflow. And everything you set your hand to is going to prosper. That's the blessing of Abraham. Deuteronomy 28. So you've got, you've got to begin to believe that the blessing of Abraham is on your life. Because you are in Christ. You've put on Christ by faith. And you are now walking in Him. And now you are heirs. Come on, somebody. You have an inheritance. And we're walking in that inheritance. Glory be to God because we are the children of Abraham. Come on. Yeah. Hallelujah. Thank you. By faith. It's not just because we got saved. We, we are grafted in and we are now, come on, somebody, Abraham's seed. Yeah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you. Ooh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Mm. Now I just want to remind you, Abraham was very, extremely, exceedingly rich <laughs> with gold and silver and livestock and possessions. Glory to God, glory to God. Mm. Hallelujah. He left Ur of the Chaldees, which is southern Iraq, <laughs> and, and God said, I'm bringing you back to the land. I'm going to bring you to a land that I had that's holy. Mm. You know why I believe that land was holy? I believe that's where Adam was dug up out of the ground. All right. I believe that dirt there in Israel, that dirt is what formed Adam. Right. Hallelujah. And then he breathed the anointing and the spirit into that. Everything was created by words except Adam. Adam was created like God. Come on, somebody. That land. Mm. Abraham, he said, I'm going to make you, I'm, I'm going to redeem you all the way back to the very beginning. I'm going to bring you all the way back to a land that flows with milk and honey. That, that land, I'm going to bring you into a land. And he brought Abraham to a place. They, they didn't, I mean, they, um, they, this is early on now. I mean, they, it's not even called Israel yet. They don't even, the word Jerusalem isn't even there yet. And he brings Abraham into that place. And God is about to bring you into a place. Come on. The same blessing that's on Abraham is on you. Come on. Hallelujah. I'm going to end this morning in Luke chapter 4. Luke chapter 4. Go over here to Luke chapter 4. Yeah. That was Cary Grant. Anyway, so Luke chapter 4. And go down here to verse 18. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Luke chapter 4, verse 18. Now this is, so, this is so vitally important because Jesus goes into the temple... And, and I've done this. They've asked me to speak at Shabbats, uh, uh, mostly Messianic ones. <clears throat> and, and they'll have the scrolls up there on the, on the pulpit. They don't even call it a pulpit. But anyway, they, they got the scrolls out. And they find the place they left off. And you start reading on the next Saturday. You start reading from where they left off last week. 
And so they got it rolled out for me and I stand there and I begin to read. Well, here Jesus is doing the exact same thing. Mm -hmm. And they've opened up the book of Isaiah. The scrolls open up to Isaiah. Hallelujah. And Jesus stands there in the temple. <coughs> Luke chapter 4 verse 18. The Spirit of the Lord. Jesus says, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Now he's reading Isaiah. But he's fulfilling it as he speaks it. Amen. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me. Now, I want you to hear this. He, that God has anointed Jesus. Yes. He empowered him to cause you to get whatever you're dreaming for done. Come on, somebody. He's got the power and the ability to do what we need done. Come on. Yes. Whatever you're dreaming, whatever you're believing God for, whatever your life is going to have, God is the author and finisher of it. Yes. And He is anointed, empowered mm -hmm. to get it done. Mm -hmm. So it says, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because He has anointed me. Yeah. Anointed me to preach the good news. Everybody say good news. Good news. You know, sometimes we, we read it as gospel and, and, and you, can get, you, can get side, you can get sideways on that where you begin to say, well, the gospel means getting saved. Well, that's true. But how many know the good news is a whole lot more than that? Amen. And so let's read it as good news uh, because that's what it says. And... Uh, he has anointed me to preach the good news to the poor. Do you know what the good news to the poor is? You're going to be poor no more. <laughs> Hallelujah. The good news to the poor is you're going to be poor no more. <laughs> Hallelujah. Now you go back to uh, Isaiah. The word poor there is the word poor in many translations, but I think the King James says uh, meek. Mm -hmm. Well, the word meek literally means someone who is putting their complete trust in another. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, How many know... Take it God is the only one that's going to make you prosper. Amen. God is the only one that's going to cause you to go to the next level. Oh, yes, and the only poor that's going to go to the next level are the meek. Come on, somebody. Right Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you go into the Hebrew in Isaiah, it means poor. <laughs> that's why many new translations say poor instead of meek. Well, what's the good news to the poor? The good news to the poor is to be poor no more. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Amen. So the very first thing he says, he addresses the poor. Oh, yeah. Hallelujah. Uh, <laughs> tradition will mess you up. Yes, it will. It does not say, I'm anointed to preach the gospel to the lost. Now, it's, that's a true statement. But that's not what it says. And you can't twist scripture. It says, I'm anointed to preach the good news to the poor. How I many know what, Je what did Jesus say? I have come that you might have life. This is the reason I came. I came that you might have life and that life more abundantly. Amen. Amen. He didn't say, I came to save the lost. No, he did in many places, but <clears throat> where he said, I came for something, this is what he came out of his mouth. Why? Because he's trying to redeem us back to Eden. Yeah. He's trying to get us back to where Abraham was going into a promised land. Come on, going to a land that wasn't even a promised land yet, but it sure was. Yeah. <clears throat> Children of Israel with Moses, they were trying to get to a place. Joshua and Caleb brought the rest of them in. To what? A land of a blessing. What was that land of blessing? It goes all the way back to being redeemed to a point just as if Adam never sinned. We've got to have a garden mentality. And Jesus says, I'm anointed to preach. I'm empowered to get this done, to preach the good news to the poor. Hallelujah. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted. Do you know there are many people 
that have lost their dream. Yes, there are a lot of people that have been hurt. There's a lot of people that, that, that the things they were believing for, they haven't got it yet, and they're broken hearted about it. They, 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 their heart is broken. Maybe, maybe it was a loved one, or maybe it was a boyfriend, maybe it was a, a, a child, wh whatever it might have been. Uh, maybe it's your dream, whatever it is, and, and you, you felt like <clears throat> it didn't happen, it's never going to happen. Right. Jesus came for those that have broken hearts. Hallelujah. Oh my God. Thank you, Jesus. And he's trying to tell you. Sarah had to wait, but she found me faithful. Faith through patience, we inherit the promises of God. But you've got to get into faith. Then it will come. Hallelujah. You can accelerate the dream. And it's through joy and peace in your believing. It says if you have joy and peace in your believing, you will abound in faith in what you're believing for. Hallelujah. <clears throat> so he came for the brokenhearted. To preach deliverance to the captives. Hallelujah. How many know he has, he has come to deliver you from, from the devil, deliver you from drugs, deliver you from alcohol, deliver you from yes. lust, deliver you from whatever it is. He's anointed and empowered to do it. Yes. You call on Him. You ask Him. And through His words, those things will work in you. He's, he Literally, you were saved because He delivered you. Come on. Yes. He delivered you from darkness. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. And recovering of sight to the blind. Now I'm here today to tell you this is not just natural blindness, it's also spiritual blindness. Amen. A lot of times we're, we don't get what we're believing for because we can't see it. Faith sees it. Faith sees the thing you're believing for. You've got to get it so clear in here that you see it. Then no one can take it from you. I mean, when you get saved, you know it. Man, you know it. You got a knowing and you know her. <laughs> and you know it. Glory be to God. Amen. Well, you see it. Amen. Well, you got to see yourself healed. Mm -hmm. You got to see yourself, you know, uh, whatever, whatever your dream is, you got to see yourself with that dream. Yes. Amen. I said, you got to see yourself with that dream. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Well, I can never see that. You're not in faith yet. Yeah. Nothing wrong with where you're at. You just need to move forward. Yeah. Good if, if you're not there yet, just keep getting in the Word, keep getting the Word, getting the Word, and the Word will bring you towards where you want to go. If you keep believing the lie, the lie you'll, you'll end up with the lie because that's where you're moving towards. How many know the devil's a liar? Yes. And the best thing you can do is tell him. <laughs> Devil, you're a liar. I'm not receiving that. My God said I have this. Amen. I will fulfill my dreams. Amen. That dream in my heart will come alive. Amen. And it will produce. Yes. Hallelujah. Why? Because God's anointed me. And, he is, and He's anointed. Yes, God. Not only is He anointed, He anointed me. Glory to God. <laughs> you know what the word Christian means? Anointed ones. Thank you. Hallelujah. Amen. <laughs> Amen. So here it says, uh, <clears throat> he has given, He's given us sight. We can see what everybody else can't see. Do you know why people, a lot of people cannot jump on board with your dream? Because they don't see it. Do you know why they don't see it? It's not their dream. Right. Now there are certain people that are encouragers. There are certain people that will see your dream and sometimes even see your dream before you do. And encourage you towards it. Amen. Hallelujah. I love encouraging people towards their dream. Yes. Hallelujah. Why? Because we need one another. Why do we come to church? We don't come to church. I mean, you could, you could watch it on YouTube. Don't you dare. I mean, well, don't you? You are probably, you're watching it right now. Love you. Thank you so much for watching. God bless you all. 
and I want to invite you to come to Great Faith Church. <laughs> Every Sunday morning at 1030, right here at 2304 Ridge Road in the city of Rockwall. Hallelujah. We'll make you welcome. Uh, <laughs> how many know that, 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 that watching YouTube is great? But it doesn't allow you to fellowship and encourage one another. Amen. We're not just here for ourselves, people. Amen. We're here for one another. One another. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory be to God. Oh, my <laughs> now, I love you. <laughs> and I'm not pointing out anybody. I don't even know who's not here today. Come on. I love you all. Glory to God. Now, and to set at liberty them that are bruised. That word bruised there in the Greek is crushed. If you're crushed, if you're not just broken hearted, you're done. I mean, you're crushed. Help us. Help us. You, you are, you are, you, you don't even, you're in so much darkness you can't even see a glimmer of light. Ooh, you're, you're, you're in that cave and it's a tunnel, but there's no end to the tunnel. I'm here today to tell you there is an end to the tunnel. There is light at the end of the tunnel. I'm here today to tell you that God will make a way where there seems to be no way. I'm here today to tell you if you don't know there's a way of escape, God's about to make a way of escape. Hallelujah. It may seem completely impossible, but there is nothing impossible with God. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me, who has anointed me. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I love, I love the next verse. To preach the acceptable year of the Lord. Well, number one, I want to say you're accepted. You're accepted in the beloved. But the acceptable year of the Lord is Jubilee. Jubilee is when you get everything back. You get your dream back. You get your car back. You get, you know. It, it's when you play a country song backwards. You ever notice that about a country song? I lost my wife and my dog and my, even my, my rifle and my pickup truck. <laughs> I was hung up on her until she hung up on me. <laughs> but you play it backward, you get everything back. Come on, somebody. That's Jubilee. Jubilee, you get, you get your dream back. Come on, somebody. He said, the reason I'm come, I'm anointed to tell you, this is your jubilee. And matter of fact, he is your jubilee. Yes, is. You're not waiting for a year of jubilee. He is the jubilee. Amen. It's no longer a year. It is in him. Why? Because in him, now there is no time. Yes, why? We're seated in heavenly places. Yes. We're in Him, so there is no time. That's why you can, you can have a, a miracle. Oh, my God. Praise the Lord. You can have something that is impossible in our time, but in, in the now, it just happens now. That's called a miracle. Amen. Hallelujah. I've prayed for people, and, and I've seen, you know, where they, they had a, a, you know, a broken arm or whatever it might be and it's just immediate miracle and it's no longer broken. Come on somebody. Amen. Crippled Thank leg come out straight. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. I've seen goiters just disappear in my hand. Ooh, Hallelujah. Why? Because I'm no longer working in my ability. I'm working in God's ability and God's ability is in the now. Amen. God's about to accelerate your dream. Oh my God. Yeah. God's about to accelerate what you're waiting on. Amen. God's about to bring you into it if you believe and, and judge Him faithful. Come on, somebody. His Word is truth. Thank you, Jesus. And the truth will make you free. Hallelujah. Jubilee. Restoration and harvest. This is the year of harvest. Kenneth Copeland prophesied, this is the year of harvest. And I don't know about you, but everything that, that is going, everything that I've missed on is about to be restored. Oh and every dream in the future is about to come. And it's about, there is an alignment that is happening right now. Amen. 
And it is time to believe God big time. It is time to believe God that He's a big God. Come on, somebody. Say, I will, I will not, not limit, limit the, Holy One the Holy One of Israel. Of Israel. I, will not I will not limit God. I take the limits off of God. And I'm going to dream big. My eyes, my ears, my heart, I'm focused. I'm pressing in. I'm going higher. I serve a big God. I, I'm going to dream big. Come on, somebody give the Lord some praise. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Ooh, this is your year.